this is, I, I rarely come out with this, but um, really shitty camembert that you've just dropped, like white mold cheese. This is, no, no, it's beyond that. It is the entire cheese board in a glass. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another week of Blind Wine Tastings. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, big thank you to Sometimes Always for organizing the wines. And of course, thank you as well for dedicating your time week on week, or if you're new to the channel, we are a blind tasting channel. We're gonna to try to identify what these wines are, how much we'd spend on them, and how much we'd actually buy to see these wines without context to tell you whether or not they are worth buying at all. Of course, if you wanna have a bit of a direct chat back and forth, jump in the Discord channel. And if you wanna support the channel, seriously, just like and subscribe. It's a YouTuber-y thing. Terribly sorry to be repetitive on you, but it actually does help. It legitimately, it's, it's the, we gotta buy these wines somehow. That really, really genuinely helps. So without much ado, let's get straight into the wines. More wines, more weeks, more people. Let's do it. All right, so looks like a pretty multicultural lineup today in the sense that we've got a whole range of different colors, reds, whites, everything in between. Very fun little mandarin juicy looking number. One big old glass of piss. Like I, I love wines that I can just look at and go, I need to drink this. It looks delicious. Yep. Uh, I think I get it. <clears throat> so, uh, it's got this like lanolin -y thing, I think is a word that I've used before. And I'm just gonna again check if lanolin is the right word. Great acidity, love the acid. Yeah, that kind of like furry uh, tannin texture. I don't think it's mousy, which is great because uh, overall, this is delicious. This, this sort of phenolic, astringent, quasi sourness. I think it just drives the palate forward. I'm salivating. Right now, I'm salivating. Uh, really quite um, uh, compelling and very thrilling drink. Would it be something that I would buy like tons of and, and you know drink tons of? No, no, absolutely not. This is an aperitif wine. This is a wine that you have before dinner. It gets this, you know, tummy grumbling. It's just, it, I'd struggle to get through a glass of that, to be honest. It wouldn't be something that I definitely enjoy drinking. And that's because it's just it's a few steps down the road in my wine evolution. Or it's poorly made. It depends. See what the guys say. If they say it's good, then it's good. If it's not, then it's not. This is just a delicious little well-made, not too serious, but serious enough orange wine. It's great. It's awesome. Moving on to wine number two, uh, red wine. It has a bit of a faded rim and purple-esque hues, but um, you know, quite uh, delicate in color. Already looking in that sort of Pinot-esque spectrum. We've got coming up in wine number five by the looks of things, generic red fruit. Um, yeah, it smells a bit oaky. Smells a little bit like it's got some barrel aging to it. Oh, I'm not getting much here. It's like kind of plummy and bright with some cherry kind of things, but I can't say it's leaping from the glass. It's a bit of a tough one to sort of pinpoint, to be honest. It's not really showcasing varietal, 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 varietal <laughs> typicity. Um, why do I use big words? It's not showing me what it is. Yum. Quite like that. Yeah, sweet. Um, very smooth, very sort of smooth and light, mid-bodied red sort of thing, which is really barking up my tree. Um, grape juicy, my guy. I don't know what else to tell you. It tastes like grape juice, and I like grape juice. That's why I'm here. Um, yeah, I'll have... Six bottles of that one. Could be Italian. Could be like Sanchevese kind of vibes. I like the chewy tannins. I like the racy red fruits. There's a little bit kind of like brambly black uh, berry thing in the background. I'd say probably hands off Natty Winemaker. Very muted in the glass. Can't, like I said, I can't really tell the style. Can't really tell the variety. For this, for me, my enjoyment of wine, I, I want the wine to be expressive of something and it's not really giving me much. So I'm, I think this is gonna be a, probably worth a lot more. I think you gotta pay for this wine but I'm not gonna pay for it. I'm gonna pay 25 bucks and I'm gonna order one bottle. Moving on to a very clear, crisp white wine, wine number three by the looks of things. Similar color to that fucking ridiculous Chardonnay that we had on the show last week that we couldn't believe the price of. Feels like good Riesling. Uh, it's a six bottle Riesling, I reckon. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoy the, the level of kind of oakiness, the complexity, the acidity kind of interest that this wine actually carries along with it that's not just like straight up and down Riesling. Really, I think it's old world. I think it's uh, from the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, and I would uh, say it's a textural variety of that ilk. It, it doesn't have enough acidity to be Portuguese because usually those whites are like a Rinto, uh, Luera. They're like really quite like Northern Portugal, um, racy type things. This isn't like that. Yeah, I think it's a shardy. I think that's a shardy and a pretty good one at that. Uh, it's definitely not um, doing that really sort of like flabby, buttery thing that some Chardonnays get into where it's like too decadent. I'd happily pay $45 for a bottle of that. I think that's really awesome. Just makes me want to chew on rocks. 
for some reason. 28 bucks, uh, and I would buy, look, I'd buy six bottles. I'd buy six. Again, really, if it is what I think it is, great um, uh, wine for easy drinking, you know, like a Rhone Valley white, but grown Southern. I don't know, like if someone poured me a glass of that, I'd be like, I get why you've got this in your cellar. This makes a lot of sense. I'd imagine that the other boy's gonna like this a little bit more than me. Um, Shardy, three bottles, and it's probably a $50 bottle, that one, slightly more expensive. Oh, another white, probably a little bit darker than the previous, a little bit uh, more color. It smells like really well balanced Chardonnay. This has more ripeness, a lot more ripeness. Sweeted, honeyed fruit, gorgeous. It's almost like sweet Riesling, to be honest. It kind of has more of that aromatic grape variety uh, to it. it. Smells lovely. Uh, sort of like sweet lemon marmalade, sort of. And then the minerality that comes with white wine as well. So like sweet and salty and that sort of smell on the nose. But yeah, that acid is really huge on it. That makes it uh, really quite appealing and easy to drink. And the flavor's delicious. Personally, I feel like this is an Italian variety of sorts. I think probably from a warm place like, like Australia, probably Fiano. This honey thing is just gorgeous. It is really pretty. Not pretty as in like aromatic and white flowers and stuff like that, but just exactly what it is. This, this amazing, gorgeous honeyed aroma. And then a nice just little bit of a citrus reminder on the back end, a little bit of lemon on the back end. So sweet, citrusy. Yeah, well, Brendo was having nine last week, so I'll have nine this week. And I'll take it home for 40 bucks a bottle, wine number four. It's it's a great little wine that you just need. Yeah, look, it's it's a great wine that serves purpose, that suits a, a, the need of something just delicious, well-made and appealing. And that's exactly what it does. And I like it. Wine number five, what are we doing? We're doing heavy reds, deeper and darker than wine number two. Mmm, this smells gorgeous. That smell when you smell really good Pinot, that's what it is. Oh yeah, I'm vexed, I'm vexed. What a weird wine, what a cool wine. I could just smell this, this is just, it smells like uh, like cedar, green sort of brambles and you know, it's got all the forest floor stuff of Pinot but it's lifted into this more peppery like green bell pepper. You know, you, you've had cooked fruit before. It smells like that. Like in, uh, it'd give you like six hearts in Breath of the Wild sort of thing if you cooked it properly. Love the acid, love the texture. Like fruit is delicious. And I think we're, we're enjoying this far too soon to what the pedigree of the wine is. Like this, it's delicious now. It is absolutely delicious now, but this could go years down the line. Really mid palate. I'm now back onto Syrah. That's how mid palate this thing is. I am like, if it ain't Syrah, it's probably Merlot. And if it's Merlot, it's one of the coolest looking, I'm gonna say it's Merlot. Brightly, I'll have a punt at Grenache. Grenache Rouge, not Grenache Blanc. Uh, and pricing point, 35 bucks. Not blowing me away, not doing anything too nuts, but pretty cool little number. All right, last wine here we have, again, you know, a little bit of Rizante going on. The yellowest of the whites so far, aside from wine number one, which had that sort of skin contacty orange thing going on. What the fuck is going on there? Oh, it smells like the best, like, charcuterie board ever. Far out, yeah. The fuck? It smells like, this smells like white mold cheese. This smells like, like, not exactly great white mold cheese, but like, the really shitty white mold cheese that you buy at like the supermarket that you know they've banged that shit out within 10 days. Oh, great. Coming home strong with this episode. Oh, love that silky honey texture. How weird. How cool, what the fuck is this? That's all, that's all I can do, that's, uh, that's, I don't have a lot for that wine. I can't tell you the great variety that it is. I can't even tell you an inkling of it. I've never encountered a smell like that. Yeah, sort of this sort of like uh, elderflowery, hibiscusy, and then on the back end, just a little bit of like, no, this isn't flower juice. Um, Light degree of skin contact, but then the, that profile of fruit is banging. Uh, I'm gonna go 12 here. I personally can't pick one of the lineup between the last two, because they're both Really, really good. Uh, let's not waste too much more time and get the boys in here so we can decide which is the best wine this week. Awesome, welcome back. We have six amazing wines. Well, I mean, yeah. it could be arguable at this stage. We have six wines. <laughs> we don't we do have like, six wines. I'm All right, well, let's start off with number one, the uh, the multiple Barocas. I was just, I was I was very blunt about this. I just said piss. Okay, good. It smells I'm, and tastes great, though. I'm glad that we, oh, wait, what? Yeah, it's delicious. It's yeah. awesome. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you've said, it's pissed, what are we doing here? It smells and tastes great. What are you talking what about? <laughs> where, where, this is the Bear Grylls test. Like, yeah. I would drink this. I thought the magic thirty-eight dollars. Or this will be a good thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thirty-eight magic number. If it's yeah, it's a, it's a magic number bottle of wine. I reckon it's great. It's, it's going to be sixty-eight bucks. I bet. How much is it? Oh! Oh! Yes, that's right. <laughs> the magic thirty-eight. Is it magic from where number. we think it's from? Oh, oh it's from the close by though. Oh, Very close by though. Popplevi. Yeah, Popplevi. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Great, great, great stuff with there. Rizza. Yeah, yeah. Skinzy Rizza. Ten percent alcohol. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Get I would drink this all day. Hence, hence that sourness. That's like nice green zippy acidity. Uh, dude, uh, and we've had Popplevi on the show back in its original iteration as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've always loved his wines. Always loved the guy. Salt of the Salt earth. Of the earth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next wine, what did you guys think? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, Gamay. Gamay vibes. I said Gamay. Bro, yeah. this is Gamay and we start calling Gamay on things, we're on. Yeah, like I, it, it could be anything, but Gamay was my gut instinct. Yeah, it's either Gamay or Chardonnay Rouge, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is a man that's, this is a man that's <laughs> scarred. Grenache. Uh, 25 bucks. Uh, 35 bucks. I have 35 bucks and I want a three. Hey! I mean, 35, put, 35 put and gammas. <laughs> 35 and gammas we got. Gonzo, so this is Les Fruits. Les Fruits. I like these labels. They're really cool. Yeah, they're really great. Fun. It is... Adelaide Hills, Grenache Sinso. Sinso. Equal gammas. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. A Grenache Sinso is very gammas. Yeah. It's basically Sinso is going to bring all the acid and the tannin and the grip that yeah. Grenache lacks. Grenache is going to, you know, and it's obviously been handled very lightly. So yeah. where Grenache has gone and this has been handled super it's light. Uh, wine number three, bit of a fun, fun one. Uh, Riesling down the beaten path, I reckon. Ooh, it's, it's got some lazy kind of characters there. See, I think that I said that I was thinking Riesling, but I've written down Chardonnay, so something must have changed my mind. Cool, but uh, I, I didn't mind it. It was a uh, cool little wine. I think it had some complexity going for it. Uh, I wanted six bottles and I was happy to pay 45 bucks. All right, 25 bucks and six. Uh, I thought it was a bit more expensive. I've had it at 50 bucks. I only wanted three of them, but I thought it was a little bit more pricey. It tasted like there was mm -hmm. some stuff going on mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Lachlan. Hey, told you fellas. That's two in a row for me. Yeah, it's not bad. If it's Chardonnay, slap my ass and call me Sally. It's, it's Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Savvy B. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, no, great. Uh, like we, I think we've had this producer on the show before. I don't know if we've had the exact wine, uh, but I rather enjoy it. It's It shows more complexity than you probably tasted from a lot of Sauvignon Blancs in your life. Mm. Uh, which is great. I don't. I like the flavour of that over mm. the sort of what what's oddly known as the quintessential Sauvignon Blanc now, which is quite mm. a new invention, really. Yep. This sort of hyper minimal style out of New Zealand. Mm. I much prefer that smell. Yeah. So know. when someone comes into the winery and they say, "Hey, I usually drink Sav B. What have I, What have you?" Got I don't for think me? of that ever. And if you serve that to them, I think they'd be pissed. Yeah. 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 Hundred yeah, percent. Moving on to wine number four. Uh, first of the twelvers. I thought this was awesome. Um, the lusciousness on the palate, I just thought, what a great example of the style. I don't think it's going to cost me an arm and a leg, but I said I'd, I'd spend up to 40 for it. Uh, yeah, but nine for 40. All right, how much are we, we spending on this, man? Wow, okay. If you say so. Shit. Okay. Wow. Yeah, what have we got? Riesling! Bang, bang, bang! Oh, wah, wah, wah. Can't afford it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, wow. That's, uh, uh, that, so that this is Rheinhessen. Rheinhessen. Yep. Yeah, there is that kind of... Uh, 12 and a half. It's German, isn't it? It yeah. is German. Ratatouille <laughs> used this in one of his meals on that South Africa. <laughs> Fucking colder as German Riesling, I've just remembered. Good job, Henry. Well, Seriously? Well, well done. Yeah. On the back for Henry. Well done. Shit, I should rewind cool. it, and if he's lying, just, you know, yeah. Now, the next one was a bit of a thrill. Next one was kind of like, <laughs> how cool. I, I struggled to pick the variety. Oh, Pinot. It's Grenache. I... I vehemently disagree. Oh no. Uh, I'm like, it's probably 100% whole bunch of Merlot. The color of it's that. too green and too mid palate weight and low acid. I just, as soon as I smell that, I'm like, black olive tapenade. Yeah. Uh, green Cabernet Franchi. It's got that stemmy thing, yeah. Where are you at? Uh, six bottles, $35. I think if I was going to pick between the two, I'd probably drink the not gamay thing that we had before. Yeah, yeah right. fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, cool wine. Right, so we're all over the place of variety. What are what are we spending? Okay. Hey, cool, that's good value. Right Thirty-eight. That's Thirty-eight. Good value. Five. Gaia, Cab Franc, Cab Franc. Sam from McLaren Vale. Dude, shit. Love that's the look of cool. that bottle. That's it's pretty fun. Isn't that it? is gorgeous. Yeah. 
So there's Dave Geyer, cut his teeth uh, all over the place actually, um, but the predominant name would be, I guess, Torbreck. Mm -hmm. um, he's also the other guy behind uh, Coco, Yeti in the Coconut. This he's is Yeti. Yeti. Of course, someone like him would push this variety to that thing. He's like, you know, let's grab a stemmy variety, you know, like Cabernet Franc and put it on yeah. a whole bunch. That is the best McLaren Royal Cab Franc so I've like, ever had. Yeah, it's just pretty That's normal, crazy probably. delicious. That's back on form for me. 12 on this one. 12 for me. Three. Oh, oh shame. Weird European thing. Okay, smell time. This is, I, I rarely come out with this, but um, really shitty camembert that you've just dropped, like white mold cheese. This is, no, no, it's beyond that. It is the entire cheese board in a glass. Yeah. Like it's got like this porky thing. It's like terrine. It's yeah. got cheese. It's like, oh, it's, yeah. I've never, and the palate is, it's sweet, but I'm not sure if it's sugar sweetness. I'm pretty confident it's it maybe a little bit, but like, Five gram a liter or something. Dude, Whatever was... it is, I just love it too goddamn much. I think it's such a cool how drink. Is so how 80, much is it? 25, 35, oh 30, sorry. How much is it? 48. Yeah, split, the split the yeah, difference. Split the difference. Really cool. Dude, what the fuck? Fin de France? This All is right. this southern southern look, southern look French number. Bits in it. Uh, that Milan de Bourgogne. Milan Blanc. With Sauvignon Blanc. Ah, uh, fucking Blanc. Loire. God damn it, why did you do this to me? How cool are the wines from Loire? Like, yeah, they Loire are is the sickest. All over the shop, in terms of flavours. Flavours that you just can't encounter anywhere else. Um, I love the fact that those bits have just decided to suspend themselves. Yeah. yeah I love just... tartrates. Hey, again, we'll say yeah, tartrates not... make the best slow globes. They're not moving. Oh. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Buy that, Wait. don't drink it, people. Hey, do you want to watch Three Stoners? Just watch a bottle of Whoa! Oh, oh, look at the kids moving. We should get lava lamps in here. <laughs> That's what? sick. That's I, really, really cool. I'm all about it. It's so weird. And it's not... I, I'm not even sure that anyone would smell it and be like, that's faulty. It faulty. could it could, it could, could be corked cork. a little bit. Yeah. It could be corky. Dude, it I've doesn't never, matter, it's delicious. I've never encountered cork tank that tastes so damn good 20 minutes later so uh we've just we've just encountered we we thought we would double check ourselves to determine it's, whether yeah. or not that flavor actually does come from the cork it's bag ass cork so it's definitely not actually corked it is there is there yeah at all just this plastic. is this is a fit well, yeah it's a resin based cork based on sugar cane it's noma cork there's there's no smell to it so that flavor is 100 percent vino baby that's that so is, cool. That has nothing to do with cork taint. And I don't, and not even barrel cork taint or yeah. anything. Like, that is legitness. That's dope. Anyway, uh, until, <laughs> until next week, we'll be here. See you guys.